Hello viewers, Super GT here. Very special video for you today. This is my first ever race in a Radical. Let's go and have a look at the car. This beautiful machine here is my race car. First up is qualifying, so let's go and do it. Go. Okay, okay, yeah. The big thing with qualifying, the big key is yeah, if yeah. you get blocked on a lap, your fault. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's jump into my first ever qualifying session in the Radical SR1 Championship. Now the format for this video, for this race day, was a 20 minute qualifying followed by two 20 minute races. And it promised to be very good fun. Now at the end of the practice, all of the testing the day before, if you watched the previous video you would have seen that the testing ended with a bit of an issue. Now in qualifying I wanted to just firstly get my own space as Gordy was saying and then make sure that he was, wasn't getting held up or anything like that and as we crossed the line here to begin our first lap it became quite immediately obvious to me that the car was still carrying the issue from from the previous day but I kind of determined just to do the best I possibly could with the machinery I had and therefore you know just get your head down try to set the best possible laps that you can and see what you can do and of course you're always learning something whenever you're in the car so got our head down we tried to do the best we could coming up here was really where I could really tell that the car just was struggling for power coming up the hill towards McLean's the car <laughs> you can almost hear it, it's just very very subdued in terms of the revs and uh, yeah it was not accelerating really as quickly as it should as we then head up towards coppice the right hander here now I did have a car Sort of fairly close in front, you can see there, maybe two, three seconds just around the corner, that's up in front. But we did have someone to kind of chase and, and use as a reference point. And this was the tricky thing on this first lap because I felt like I was perhaps keeping up with this guy. I didn't know how quick he, he was, but I was, you know, I was keeping up with someone, so maybe the car wasn't so bad. But um, coming down towards the first of the two hairpins, and this was probably somewhere I was struggling during testing, during that first um, first couple of test days. But uh, getting it quite tidy there on this occasion, into the final corner of the lap. Now in testing I was managing to do 1 minute 36s as my best laps. And this lap was going to be slower as Gordy looked on from the side and on the live timing on his phone. He could see that I was definitely off the pace. And that first lap was a 1 minute 40.87. Now, yes, it was my first lap. Perhaps we still have to get up to speed. But it definitely felt a little bit off. A couple of laps later, lap number 6, this one. This was actually my fastest lap in qualifying. And it was a 138.8. And that's over 2 seconds slower than what I knew I could do. And therefore, I kind of was looking at the dash. I would see you know, these lap times. I was seeing the laps. And I felt like, okay, let's just turn this into a practice session, just try and learn as much as we possibly can. And McLean's here, this corner, this fast right-hander at the top of the hill, was a corner I was struggling with during testing. I was just trying to lay off the brakes a lot earlier on that turn. And here, again, I think braking technique was something that I was not quite getting on top of during testing and somewhere I could definitely improve. But uh, end of lap... 13 here this was the end of qualifying and therefore it was time to bring the car in 
and report on how I felt the car or how I found the car to drive to the mechanics and also let's find out where we qualified on the grid. Yeah, so we still had some engine issues from testing. The last session of testing, the engine was like 10% down on power. We looked at stuff overnight, tried changing a few things, didn't quite work. Um, engine was still about the same. I was, I was last, but I know that I could, you know, my best lap there was a 138.8, 138.8. And the testing I was doing 36 is easily, so you know, I haven't just lost two seconds. It's, no, it's they're, just they're, like, they're, they're devastating. I don't think it's anyone's fault, it's just like, it happens, that's what yeah, happens. Yeah, it, it's more a sport, it's but it happens. Just... Yeah. 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 Okay, time for race one. The car's still being fixed right now, had an, uh, an engine issue. Yeah, let's get ready. Hopefully the engine's fine. Doesn't sound very fine. 14th on the grid, I'm last, I'm, I'm last. I do this on Gran Turismo, you know, just deliberately don't qualify, start last and then it's more fun, so. I'm gonna win it on the first corner, right? I'm gonna send it, I'm not gonna break. So as a result of all of the delays of changing the engine over, the guys did a really good job to change it over so quickly, but unfortunately it was just a couple of minutes longer than we would have really wanted as it meant that we had to start from the pit lane instead of the normal rolling start that everyone else was doing. But eventually the race was, was starting, the lights went green, the pack went past and I was thrust into my first ever race in the Radicals. Now obviously not the way we want to start, unfortunately of course by starting in the pit lane you don't really have the chance to warm up your tyres so my tyres were pretty cold by this point so I had to be somewhat cautious going around the track on this first lap. See there was a lot of dust being kicked up there by the pack ahead and of course by starting the pit lane everyone else kind of gets a jump on you so we are already quite a few seconds behind. So we're going to do all we can do. Now the first thing I've noticed really is as I come up this hill that the power issue is still there and that is very unfortunate it's going to make it really tricky to try to really catch up with the rest of the rest of the field but kind of like qualifying we're just going to do all we can do i'm grateful just to be on the track so we're just going to try and learn as much as possible and see what happens you never know what might happen and in many ways you know there's going to be accidents and things like that and as we come down the hill here on lap number two that's exactly what does happen as you can see here off on the gravel might spot a white car there very close to barrier on the outside and that in uh, in due course uh, sets up this safety car that was kind of good news for me because it meant that I was a lot closer to the pack and I'd, I'd actually have a chance of trying to fight someone now and as the safety car um, was ending as you see here through the final corner it was, well you can see here, the acceleration difference was quite stark because I wasn't really able to keep up unfortunately. But again, all I could do was just try to lap the best I possibly could. Keep keep calm, make sure I don't do, do anything silly and just try to do my best basically. Just still try to learn, still try to continue to race the best I possibly can. You never know what might happen. So through the crane curves, lap number one, or lap number one of this restart should I say. To be clear, this is actually lap number four of the race now. Then up the hill, you can see the car's just ahead, really just pulling away, and there's not much I can do about it at this point. But again, turning it into a practice session up the hill into McLean's, and I was kind of keeping up with these cars in front, but I, I felt like it was just, you know, it was unfortunate 
in the sense that, oh actually, well, that was quite unfortunate, you see there's a car off in the gravel, and that is going to mean another safety car, surely, as we have a car very slow here, we are going to go through and take another position, so we've actually gained three positions in this race, courtesy of other cars having certain and various mishaps so far. So we can still gain positions here. We can still do something about trying to get some positions. And we're going to gain another one. You can see there a car off at the hairpin. And you might be able to spot some flashing lights on the left-hand side there. Another safety car gets thrown. So after all of that, we actually gain three positions. Uh, four in total in this race. So the second safety car of this 20-minute race. So quite a hectic one so far. And fortunately enough for me, I'm not involved in all of it. So through the final corner for the second safety car restart and this one was quite confusing because the lights weren't on some cars were going very slow some cars were just flying past at varying speeds so it's a very weird kind of moment there so a bit of inexperience i suppose but coming up into turn one i lost a couple of positions went up the inside of this black car almost made contact and then here i think is a clear indicator of the power difference it's almost like formula two cars came to formula one but i'm doing my best coming down the hill there's a massive moment here. Look at this white car. That was a nice little 360. Fortunately, no one gets collected, and that was kind of a scary moment there, going head on with another car. Fortunately, the car washes wide, and we gain two positions there. Uh, so we're doing our best. We are still gaining some positions. I go slightly defensive here up against the car behind, but uh, it's kind of inevitable that this car is going to go for this pass. Not much I can do, as you can see there and uh, we lose one more position again. So I felt like when I was behind some of these cars, I, I felt as though my speed was okay. But you see there, I'm kind of <laughs> shrugging and you know a little bit frustrated that I can't really do too much at this point in time. Um, all I can do really is to stay in the race and try to capitalize on any mistakes. You see another car going wide. So you know, this Radical SR1 is quite a tricky car to drive. It's kind of uh, quite loose. And that's proven to be the case for that white car on the left-hand side there, rejoining. And uh, that's going to be another position gained. And that lasted a couple of laps before I was overtaken here on the main straight, going into towards turn one. I, I felt like these cars, I, I was looking in the mirror, I, I was seeing them catching up quite quickly. And I knew there was not much I could do to really defend. So I thought, I'll just race my own race and just, you know, whatever happens, happens as we uh, then head down the hill. The brain of curves. And you see the power difference, uh, you know, from the exit of turn one down towards the old hairpin. I've already lost quite a lot of time. And yeah, not much you can do about it. Uh, a couple of laps later, similar place. Uh, another car here uh, goes through on the left and I didn't really fight it. I felt like, okay, uh, not much I can do. I'm gonna let you go and just maybe just try to follow you through for a couple of corners the best I can but a couple of laps later that was it that was the end of my first ever race in the radical obviously not completely ideal in every way but still very much enjoyed it and we still gained quite a few positions going up from 14th to finishing inside the top 10 in 9th Yeah, not much I could do there. Again, power issues in the engine. It's quite fun watching everyone crash. There's lots of carnage. But uh, let's try and get it fixed for the next one. All right, fortunately, we've been able to work out what it was. It was a exhaust issue. And um, we're going to get that fixed. The guys have been working hard to work out, you know, the, the problems and diagnose it. So we're going to get that fixed. So hopefully now we're going to have a good race, starting 13th. You know, we're going to try and fight through as many positions as we can, have a load of fun with it and see what we can do. Okay, getting on that sim to beat everyone's times. There we go, 26-8. I'll take that. Everyone else cheated. Everyone else above me cheated. <laughs> Get out. My turn. See ya.
All right, let's jump into race number two. And as we leave the assembly area and drive onto the track for the rolling up laps, as I put my foot down here on the throttle, I am immediately able to tell the difference in power. And thankfully the car feels like it has been revived and the power is back. So now I can have a proper race. As we form up here, so we form up on the grid. It isn't actually a grid start. It is a rolling start, but you form up on the grid so that everyone's in the right positions. Then you set off on a formation lap where, of course, you're going to warm up the tyres and the brakes before finally getting around the end of that lap and going into formation, the 2x2 two two formation. And this is my first, let's say, proper race start in the Radical. I'm not really counting that first one. Let's count this one. So away we go, the red lights are off and the race begins, another 20 minute race. Let's head towards turn one, I'm in P14, which is dead last at this point. Heading into turn one, now a couple of cars here go very wide and don't really get any purchase off the exit of the turn. So we're gonna gain two positions immediately. So that's a rather successful turn one. Now we're side by side with a grey car, who's on the right hand side there. I'm gonna keep my foot planted here to try to edge him out as we go through the grainer curve and that's going to be another position gained through the old hairpin which is turn four three position gained already the car in front here gets a just a really poor run and i'm able to gain another position so that's four already and it's about to be five the orange car here does not get a good exit we're going to head to the outside open up the steering get on the power and gain another position now there's a bit of contact here as you can see a bit of a uh, bit of correction but we're on our way and thankfully no damage to report i was looking in my mirror there just to check if there was any sort of uh, puncture or anything but thankfully no damage that small contact i'm up into ninth position from 14th but we're going to try and make that eighth position as i'm looking up the inside here in towards the melbourne hairpin and it's going to be a nice clinical move up the inside we've got it done beautifully done and that's p8 and uh, the camera kind of just disconnects a couple of times here but this is the end of lap number one i'm in ninth but i'm in the back of this group for the battle for third the top two have driven off into the distance but this group here is third to eight me being eight so now that we're on the back of them we're going to try and see if we can gain any positions here and it really is good fun having the power to play with now that I can really actually push and try to have a proper race with these guys. Uh, down towards the old hairpin. As uh, we get a little bit loose there on the exit, but the car's okay. Instead of lap number four, this is actually the second racing lap. As uh, we then head in towards McLean's, fast right-hander here at the top of the hill. And you can see here uh, that this group very much has uh, quite a lot of fighting within it. We are slowing each other down. The guy in third there has just managed to break clear. That tells me that, you know, we are slowing each other down in this group. Kind of good news for me as I'm trying to catch up. Now, the driver in front there went quite uh, narrow on coppice, did not get a good exit. I'm not going to be able to get through here. But can we set ourselves up for a good move on the exit? Not quite getting the exit I would have liked. But here you see it's going to be two by two formation going down on the brakes in towards the hairpin so lots going on we're going to try and perform the classic old switcheroo here and try to get the the move on the exit we're going we're going to do that with the yellow car up in front on the grass but here i'm on the outside not much i can do here and then the black car comes back up the inside now down the main straight end of lap number two it's going to be side by side now trying to gain p7 as as we head down on towards turn number one lap number three late on the brakes not much i can do here other than perform of course the old switcher once again now we're going to get squeezed towards the grass but i'm going to keep my foot planted firmly on the throttle pedal and it's going to be a very brave battle between the two of us here through the craner curves lots of space given respect given and we're going to gain seventh position and p6 is looking imminent at this point Unfortunately, this is where the race unravels for me, I'd say. This is the downturn in the race. As we head up the hill, and we're going to get a repass in quite a, well, a very rude move, I'd say. 
went straight on, didn't really give me any space at all. And you see the frustration as I raise my hand. And the annoying thing about that is not that I lose the one position, I lose two. So back down into ninth, I'm going to have to repass this guy, who I'm pretty sure I'm quicker than, and uh, try to get the job done once again. Down in towards the chicane. Trying to carry the speed through here as much as possible. Not really close enough, I'd say, to go for a move in towards the hairpin here. Looking for the brake uh, marker board. Uh, one thing I did see there is I definitely later and uh, faster on the brakes compared to this car in front. I'm pretty sure I am quicker than this guy, but I can't really quite do anything about it at this point. I'm just kind of having, you know, sort of one eye on that group in front who are now just beginning to pull away and edge clear. And, you know, any corner I spend behind this guy longer than necessary, it's going to be time that I am losing to that group in front. So I need to try to dispatch this driver as fast as possible. And um, let's see if we can do that here towards the old hairpin. Definitely not close enough on this occasion. But this kind of is a bit of foreshadowing for what's about to come. As you come through this, as you come through here, see, so it just takes a very weird line. I get a massive moment of oversteer. As he left a load of space, I tried to get on the power a little bit too early and it unsettled the car. And we almost lose control, but thankfully I didn't. Um, but yeah, I'm just losing so much time now behind this guy and I just can't quite, can't, uh, can't quite get this move done. Uh, heading up the hill towards Coppice, through the right hander here at the top of the hill. Now he's going to make another mistake here. And I'm on the right hand side, which is going to be the wrong side of the chicane. Not much I can do, so I'm going to kind of lift off the power. Let him settle back into position. And then try to go for the move in towards the first hairpin. But I can tell really by this point how much I'm being held up. And uh, I would say I'm probably going about one or two seconds a lap slower. So I think, you know what? We're going to send a massive dive bomb off the century. Fortunately, it wasn't dive bomb off the century because it didn't work. It went too deep. And he managed to cut me back on the exit. But at least I was trying. I was going for it. And I was getting really stuck into this battle. And as frustrating as it was, it was still a good fight. Uh, through the final corner of lap number four says lap six I've, I've lost count it's about the fourth lap it's about the fifth lap now as we head in towards turn number one and I, I did briefly mention that the race unraveled but it's about to unravel a little bit more I would say because as we come through the crane of curves in towards the old hairpin just watch the line of the car in front and it was kind of awkward just like it was in the previous lap and this is what's gonna set me off into this spin as you can see and what that does it means all of a sudden I was in a massive crash and I know it flashes forwards to this moment here where I'm just kind of gathering my thoughts and trying to recover as I do then climb out of a very badly damaged car but let's just recap that and just really take a look at what happened there because I came through the old hair but this car took a really weird line I saw the gap open I got on the power a little bit too early I unsettled the car but the car goes round then the next car in the pack just couldn't quite uh, pick a side to go to and couldn't quite react in time and then we had quite a savage head-on collision as you can see luckily the cars were fine I was fine and he was fine and that is the main thing here but it was quite scary for a moment having a car hurtling towards you at full speed because the safety car is coming out on circuit. That must be whatever happened down at the old hairpin. So that, I'm afraid, out of the race is Steve Alvarez Brown. So you can see the damage to the front end of his car. Uh, right there is right there is the second car. And again, that is some um, badly damaged and into the gravel trap. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm okay. I'm just annoyed that the cars. So I've got this car coming at me head on. Yeah. And then pff, I was like, oh my god, this is really gonna hurt. Yeah. And then luckily luckily it kind of just I just spun and went off to the side. Yeah. I mean mate, at least you try At least I was trying. Right. It's here I think. So this yeah, is it. Just play this mate. That looks really quick on there, seeing that. Yeah, it's just went a bit wide there. He's like, 
he's had I think what's happened is he's had a wiggle and he slammed on the brakes so he's like had the wiggle here he shit himself got on the brakes yeah. so you've had to dodge him put in more steering yeah. in the middle of old hairpin it's yeah. just it's just unsettled the car yeah, yeah. god that's like it's weird because when it happened it felt like slow motion obviously the car's coming at me quick but it felt like that last second of him coming at me it felt really slow. And I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no, bang. But there, it's like, whoosh, it comes straight at you so fast. What are your thoughts on that, Gordy? Fucking big shunt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's a kind of thing in motorsport, like once you've had your first big shunt, you gain a lot of confidence. So it's like, it's always good when you get a big shunt out of the way pretty quickly. We know we know the pace is there, we know it's, it's, it's really good. Um, we just didn't get the full opportunity to show it. Yeah, I've got to say, big big help from Gordy this weekend. Um, having a having a driver coach and a good one, it is so worth having. Big up to Gordy much, the goat. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, yeah, that's not really the way we wanted to end the weekend, but um, I'm all right. That's the main thing. It was quite scary for a moment there, but um, I'm okay. James, the other driver, he's fine. The cars aren't so fine, but the smoke sport, it happens. I was, I'm kind of annoyed that I dropped the car there, but just got to give a massive shout out, of course, to Radical. Honestly, they've been so good this weekend, you know, allowing me to drive the car. It was so fun. Donington in the Radical, amazing experience. And uh, that race at the end there was honestly it was the best fun I've had um, in, a, in a race car. Um, and thank you to you for watching. Really hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry that there couldn't be any more, but you know we're going to try and talk with Radical and try and hopefully work something out if they let me back out. And uh, I promise not to crash again. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.